Good morning everyone from a very early start in Vancouver. It's been a hot minute since I last filmed a video in my hometown, and I'm happy to do so since I got a very special video for you today. I'm making my way down to Eugene, Oregon for their local marathon, one that I've been training for for the last 10 weeks. Besides that, I'm taking Amtrak's Cascade service all the way down to Portland, then getting a ride with a friend for the last mile per se. Today's journey starts at Vancouver's Pacific Central Station where Via Rail and Amtrak operate out of. For this service, it's requested that you show up one hour before customs clearance, but you can definitely push the button a bit and show up maybe about 30 minutes before at the latest. As you can see, there's a queue for coach passengers while the business passengers can just walk up to the counter. I haven't done one of these in a while, but you need to fill out a US CBP declaration form before an Amtrak host checks you in. I was honestly surprised to see that there's a US pre-clearance facility here in the station prior to boarding the train. I had the impression that everything would be done at the border crossing. To my knowledge, this is the only US pre-clearance facility outside of an airport. A few questions later, and we're in a dedicated fenced off area of the train station, just for this Amtrak train. Let's take a look at the ride down to Portland. Starting things off, which is very interesting, the rear locomotive has its engine taken out, and it's used as a baggage car. Since the restart of service to Vancouver, BC, Amtrak hasn't brung back the original Talgo car sets up here. Instead, classic Horizon cars are being used instead. Three coach cars, and the last one is split between the cafe and business class. What's super cool is that there's a fairly new Siemens Charger locomotive being used today. Enough of being a train nerd, and let's check out the business class section of the train today. This layout is in a 1-2 seating arrangement. I really wanted to get a seat on the right side of the train as it has the best views, but the single left side will do for today. The other seats were reserved for parties of two. Definitely an older seat, but still very comfy. Some overhead lights and the most legroom I've ever had on any piece of transportation. The footrest can be released by a foot lever and on the right armrest, there are two levers. One for the leg rest, and the other for the recline. It's a bit janky, and the leg rest wasn't coming out, but I figured it out later on the ride down. Finally, there's a very large tray table that covers the distance between you and the seat in front of you. And two 120 volt power outlets. It's been said a lot, but I'm lucky I'm in this seat. These power outlets are in a poor position. I know I should be buying all my meals on this trip to show you, but I'm on a relatively strict diet leading up to my marathon. So I brought my own breakfast in disposable containers. We got a banana, an everything bagel with herb and garlic cream cheese, oatmeal raisin cookies, some kombucha because I just got over a stomach flu two days prior to filming this video, a vanilla protein shake, and finally some cold brew coffee. I also have a bag of chips for later on. I'm happy I brought this, not only to save a few bucks, but the cafe car had a huge lineup as soon as it opened. Hey look, the train is moving now, and we departed 10 minutes early. Leaving Pacific Central Station, we passed by these classic Via Rail Observation Park cars, and the West Coast Express passenger cars, the local commuter rail.
The entire journey down to Portland is planned for 8 hours and 20 minutes, with arrival time of 2.50 p.m. The first leg down to Seattle takes on average of 4 to 4.5 hours. Passing through Burnaby, let's take a look at the regular coach seats. Wow, these are pretty good, and I honestly could have just taken these seats and it would still be super comfortable. They appear to be the exact same dimensions as the business class seats, except the business has crazy legroom. Also, take advantage of the kick to open doors. Passing through New Westminster, we pass through the first of many BNSF yards. We were held up just shy of the Fraser River for a freight train crossing the New Westminster Bridge. Originally opened in 1902 for both cars and trains, now is just used for trains since the construction of the Patello Bridge in 1937. Speaking of which, this is the first time I've seen the replacement for the bridge being built in person, which is super cool being right next to the main tower structures. The weather today is so fantastic. It's the first day this year where the temperature was over 20 degrees, 68 for all you folks down south. Before entering White Rock, let's take a look at the washrooms here. A large but basic setup, but the entire ride down there was no paper towel available, and it was kept pretty clean the entire way. This is a Peace Arch border crossing, the other being the Pacific Highway crossing, and it accounts for the third busiest land crossing between Canada and the US. The train makes a quick 10 minute stop while US CBP agents board the train. They just collect declaration forms and no questions were asked. Although one of the agents had a scanning device that looked like something out of Ghostbusters. Right as the train moved again, we enter Blaine, Washington. This town is the definition of small town USA. On this journey we will pass by a lot of these small towns along the way, like the town of Custer. Definitely a, a blink and you miss it type of place. Eventually they got the leg rest to work, and boy does this make a great lounging seat. The first stop for this train is in Bellingham, the closest major city to the Canadian border. I've been coming here all my life and I absolutely love it here. This city has great taste and culture. The train station is a small transportation hub. The train station itself, cruise ship terminal, and the Alaska Marine Highway Terminal. 
a ferry that connects Alaska with the lower 48 without stepping foot on Canadian land. I hope one day to take it, as it's a super interesting and scenic sailing. While waiting for the train to depart, here's a menu shot of the cafe car. On the way to the next stop in Mount Vernon, we go through Chuckanut Pass. This is the most scenic part of the entire journey. The only words to describe the views is immaculate. Soon enough the fields of Skagit County came, and we arrived in Mount Vernon. Right before we entered Everett, I passed out for a little bit and woke up to the amazing Puget Sound. In the cafe car is a small snack pack and water are complimentary. The cafe car accepts credit cards and both US and Canadian cash, but the credit card machine was down nationwide. Seeing as I forgot to get US cash, I had to run inside the station in Seattle to an ATM. Depending on how late the trade is, the stop is about 30 minutes. That took less than 5 minutes, even had time to grab two Gatorades. They haven't even boarded the train yet, so I got in the lineup and showed my original ticket with no issues. We leave Seattle shortly after boarding was completed. As you can see, the Telgo car sets are still being used between Seattle and Eugene. By the way, go Hawks! The Amtrak Cascades Corridor is between Vancouver, BC and Eugene, Oregon, but the only two services are between Vancouver and Portland and Seattle to Eugene. The Vancouver to Portland section only restarted post-pandemic a month prior to filming this. If I wanted to take the train all the way to Eugene, I would have had the overnight in Seattle, or hop on a thruway bus from Vancouver and take the coastal starlight. 
And you know what? I'm really happy I didn't do that because in this leg of the trip, this is where the views ran somewhat flat and boring. Besides being able to see Mount Rainier from my seat, the views were somewhat uneventful. Washington State is very lush and green, but the views before were just amazing. I was getting hungry and it was lunchtime. I used that $3 off coupon you saw earlier in the video. I got some clam chowder, Hawaiian sweet onion kettle chips, skittles, and a soda water. This tasted really good and was priced fair, but honestly didn't fill me up too much. Just enough. As you might already know, food is not complimentary for business class passengers. Not to mention most of the food is microwaved. The soup was not microwaved, probably why it tasted so good. We finally came up to the Columbia River and stopped in the wrong Vancouver. Vancouver, Washington that is. That means we're pretty close to Portland. Now would be a great time to collect my thoughts on this journey. Let's start with the negatives. This journey is so scenic and the older Horizons cars are not doing any favors here. The windows are so narrow compared to the Talgo cars and I found myself hunching down quite a bit just for some better views. Amtrak has always been criticized for some poor timetables, and this whole journey takes over 8 hours. It takes an hour to fly between Vancouver and Portland, and roughly 5 to 6 hours to drive this route with no traffic. But this actually leads me to my positive takeaways. Traffic has gotten so bad in all the major city routes along the I-5, that this train could take only maybe an extra hour longer instead of driving, depending on the time of day. Driving can be stressful, and this is the complete opposite. This whole trip was extremely relaxing and stress-free. The staff were very friendly and helpful, which is always great. And we pulled into Portland only 10 minutes behind schedule, which is great timing. I actually beat my friend picking me up as they got stuck in traffic before Portland. They also drove down from Vancouver as well. The pricing on this trip was great, as I only paid 160 US dollars for a one-way ticket in business class. Coach was only 80. I was also a bit surprised as how busy the train was for leaving Vancouver, BC, which is a great sign for Amtrak. I could not highly recommend more taking this train as I would not hesitate to use it in the future. Great prices, views, comfort, and potentially speed too. This was a bit of a lengthy video, but I'm glad you stuck it out to the end for such an amazing journey. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you in the next video.